Good morning, Eli family. Can we stand in the word as we pray? We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are wonderful. this morning we have come to say thank you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we thank you Lord for 19 years God of your goodness we thank you Lord for 19 years God of your miracles we thank you Lord for 19 years God of breakthrough we thank you Lord for 19 years God of, of all the things God that God you have done God for each one of us Lord we are here God is because of your goodness this morning God we lift you up this morning God we call upon your name God you are the good God you are the almighty God you are the same today yes today and forevermore mighty God this morning God take all the praise take all the glory God this morning God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord we want to thank you Lord for your traveling mercy Lord we want to thank you Lord for every member God of a life God in this sanctuary Lord we have come God to give you all the praise to give you all the worship Lord we are praying God this morning for the people God that are on their way God coming to worship you Lord we are praying God for your protection for your guidance Lord to for them God to be here God to worship you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord this morning God we are praying spirit of the living God you come God and move like never before in this sanctuary God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord this morning God we are praying God Lord we are praying God committing your word God into your hand Lord as we have come God to hear your word God you speak God through your servant God this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Lord we are praying God committing every member God of a life God this morning Lord as we have come God prepare our hearts God to receive your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning God let your word come God to encourage us God let your word come God to to strengthen us God let your word come God to equip us God this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we honor you God we lift you up God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ this morning God you come God and all take all the praise in Jesus mighty name Lord we pray Amen. Amen. We will celebrate our God. We will celebrate our God. Let his banner be raised and his glory be seen. We will celebrate. We will celebrate. Oh, 
so good. Blessed be your name. We say one more time. Lord, you are so good. Blessed be. Oh, we say, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are so good.
You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you.
worship you. Are. You are worthy to be praised. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Good morning, church. Our first scripture reading will be taken from Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. In those days, the number of disciples was increasing. The Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Poncarus, Nicanor, Timion, and Paranemus, and Nicholas from Antioch, a, con a convert uh, to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands over them. So the word of God spread to the number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and the large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Amen. My second scripture reading will be taken from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. In the same way, deacons are to be worthy of respect, sincere, not indulging in much wine, and not pursuing dishonest gain. They must keep hold of the deep truth of the faith with a clear conscience. They must first be tested, and if there is nothing found against them, let them serve as deacons. In the same way, the women are to be worthy of respect, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. A deacon must be faithful to his wife and must manage his children and his household well. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, saints of God. Good morning. Welcome to A Life Baptist Church. And our audience, our online audience, we want to welcome you this morning also. Today is a special day in the life of Eli Baptist Church. Nineteen years ago, God dropped a thought. And on that thought, that's why we are here today. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for the pioneers who started on that day, on the 9th of January 2005. We thank God for those who came along during that day time of 19 years, the journey of 19 years. We thank God for those who are here today, and we thank God for those who is yet to join us. Hallelujah. God has been good to us, and he's, he's faithful, God. He has been faithful through thin and thick. God has been there for us. We thank him for his faithfulness, his goodness, and his mercy that have located us to this day. He is a Benezer how far he has brought us. The one who has started the journey, he will bring it to a perfect finish. Hallelujah. We thank God for this morning. And on that note, please, go around, greet somebody, and say welcome to the house of God. The Lord who began it, he will accomplish it. The Lord who began it, he will accomplish it. It's the Lord, the Lord who began it. He will accomplish it. It is the Lord, the Lord who began it. He will, he will accomplish it. It's the Alpha and Omega. It's the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. He will accomplish it. He will. Accomplish it. He will accomplish it. 
may be seated. Amen. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Where we proclaim your name. This is a house of healing. Our hearts are full of faith. You have a full attention. You have the final say. So come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Yeah. And 
your blood is the one that runs your through our veins. veins. It's your kingdom that triumphs. Your kingdom triumphs over. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. We have come to a solemn, a solemn part of this service this morning. After 19 years, we have grown. And when you grow, the work becomes difficult. And so Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will bring in more laborers. This morning, two people are going to be ordained as laborers in the house of God. You see, when, when you become a deacon or a deaconess, everything changes. Now, you are a servant, and you have to serve God's people. And it's not an easy thing, I'm telling you, because some people you don't like, you still have to serve them. Some people that disagree with you, you still have to serve them. And it takes the grace of God. So before the pastor comes, I will ask you, I will plead with you. Let it be your prayer every day. Pray for the deaconesses and the, the, the deacons and the leaders of the church. That God will give us grace and also give us a servant heart. Because at times, if you don't take care, some people, you're going to hit them with a blow. Jesus even whipped them. So, but when the grace comes along, it will help you. And on this note, would you please stand and help me welcome the custodian and the senior pastor of this, uh, Reverend Kweku Adusu. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Somebody, you can do better. This is for Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Shall we please take our seat, look at somebody and say, you look wonderful. You, you can do it better. You look wonderful. For the last time, don't lie. Look at them at the eye and say, you look gorgeous. No. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Beloved, this morning, the service is of twofold. Uh, we are celebrating 19 years of his goodness, but there's a housekeeping I need to do and get out of the way. Uh, if you have been with us since Wednesday, you know that uh, Reverend Patrick has been a blessing. And so we want to hear more of him. Come on, huh? I like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is there anybody worshiping with us for the very first time, a long time? We recognize you. We don't take you for light. I pray that God will meet you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, we have come to an important event of every local church. We as a ministry have set apart people that we have carried them, weighed them, that they are fit to serve God's people. In the body of Christ, in the layman's term, the highest honor is to receive in the body as a deacon, hallelujah, or a deacon. My, my younger lady read the test. I will not do that again. 
he read it, she read it to you, Acts chapter 6. Because of time, I will not do that. But at least let me read just one verse, Acts chapter 6, verse 6. Whom they set apart, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. Hallelujah. They were set apart, and they prayed and laid their hands upon them. That's what I'm going to do this morning. From the passage, we, we get a glimpse of three things that a deacon or a deacon, deaconess is supposed to do. One, be assistant to the pastor in serving the congregation. Two, be servants to the church. Three, be witnesses in the community and the world at large that Christ came to serve and not to be served. It is a place of servant leadership. And after a thoughtful prayer consideration with my other leaders, these two people have proved themselves. Hallelujah. I say these two have proved themselves. Since Wednesday, Pastor Patrick has been talking to us, and some of the words he has been using is commitment and consistent. If you add it together, I believe you can come around somewhere like faithfulness. Hallelujah. And these two candidates have been proving of their consistency, their commitment to the house of God. Hallelujah. And this candidate has been selected to be part of the deaconship board of a life and to serve with me. I pray the congregation, we will support them, encourage them, and most importantly, respect them as they take the ministry of service. I am honored to call this into the ministry of deaconship. And ladies and gentlemen, without wasting my time, let's welcome our dear sister, Lady Antonis Aduse and Lady Regina Kweku. Come forward, come on, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a charge, you respond. I'm give, then I'll give a charge to the congregation, we'll respond. Then we will pray over you, plus the ministers in the house, plus two representatives of the deaconship board. Then after we finish praying for you, then your family people will join you and we'll pray again. You say, Pastor, why are you doing that? They are two different entities. You as an individual, your grace and your commitment has been sought out to serve. You are not going to do this work in a vacuum. You will need the support of your family. And you need the support of your spouses also. So that's why I'm doing that way. So that when you are serving, they are not feeling guilty. Serving, Pastor Kobe has already said, can be challenging. But for me, it is rewarding. Hallelujah. So both of you, I want you to respond to this charge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm charging you that you are being ordained to be a helpers. May the pastor and his helpers, you help solve problems and be a witness to Christ, not to create problems. Be reminded the reason of your selection. Hallelujah. And at this juncture, if anybody has a serious concern why we should not lay our hands upon them and ordain them as a or a dick into the deaconship or say it else remain silent until you go to your grave and everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah do you pledge to help and assist pastor to serve god's people and to serve as your strength permits you that you will not be a hindrance to the administration and advancement of the cause of the kingdom of God. Do you promise to dedicate yourself in the form of adversary suggestion to the best of your ability and as you are being called on God? Do you promise before God and this congregation that you serve in the role of a deacon Basically, waiting on tables. That's all deaconship is about, waiting on tables. Hallelujah. But unfortunately, it has become notorious for 
many Baptist deacons and deaconship to be a thorn in the flesh of the pastor. I know you will not be that. If it is your desire and you promise to serve God's people and serve alongside pastor and you pledge to serve God's people in a servant leadership role but not making problems but helping to solve problems if this is your wish may you respond and say we will by the grace of God we will, we will by, by the, the grace, grace of God, God. Amen. Amen somebody put your hands together for Jesus do we also as a congregation pledge to pray for them to encourage them and follow their leading so far as they are not deviating from biblical truth and biblical principle. And that will honor and respect them and make their work easy. If this is also our intention, would the congregation respond and say, we will help us God. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. The Gentiles, I will need you at the, at the, uh, at the keyboard. Hallelujah. I don't know how you are going to kneel down, but find a way to kneel down. If 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 that, I thought your 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 husband will help you to kneel down. I don't want to be in trouble. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Shut the chest stand up. My soul, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, my soul. My soul pray. Somebody lift up your voice. My soul, my soul praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My soul praise the Lord. For the second time, my soul. Somebody lift up your voice. Pray that God will give them the grace. Get God to endow them with wisdom, with the seven hearts, with patience, to serve God's people, to be diligent, to be faithful, consistent, and commitment. My soul, my soul. Let me hear the church sing it and pray over them. That grace shall be multiplied unto them. Kapalobosha. Can I hear somebody talk to God? Talk to God on their behalf. Talk to God on their behalf. Kapalola Rebosha. Hallelujah. Hear me, hear me, O D, this very day. Let the angels be present and the whole public congregation witness that on this day, Lady Anthony, I do say you were set apart as a servant and a handmaid of God to serve God's people. Literally, you have been called to serve tables, to wash the feet of people, to bind their wounds and to encourage them when they are down. To stand before the shepherd of the house to minister comfort to the brokenhearted. And by the smearing and touching you of this oil, may the Holy Spirit envelope you. May the Lord touch you. I remove every infirmity in the name of Jesus. May the Lord empower you to do what you cannot do on yourself. This day, publicly, we set you apart by the witness of these ministers here and as the shepherd of this house. And I now confirm upon you and I proclaim you as a deaconess to serve God's people in this house in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hear me, hear me, O D. Let the angels witness and the public witness that this day we declare Lady Regina Kweku set apart. Pray over you and I oil you and anoint you 
with the backing of the Holy Spirit as a deaconess in this house. May the oil give you the wisdom, the grace to serve as you stand alongside the shepherd of the house, to minister comfort, solace, to serve God's people in every capacity that you are called upon. On this day, I confess it upon you and I confirm it upon both of you that you have been set apart to do good. Go and do exploit in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And somebody said, Ladies and gentlemen, I now declare to you Regina and Antonis as a deaconess with full respect and honor in this house to sing. Go and do exploit in Jesus' name. And somebody said, at this time, shall the ministers come around? I need Deacon Florence and I need Deacon Andrews to represent the Deacon board and with the clergy... Uh, Dr. Joe, come here, uh, Reverend uh, Patrick, you are going to lead to pray. Pastor David here, uh, I, I need somebody to hold the oil so that Pastor Kobe, no, you, you cannot do that. Uh, uh, no, no, you can't. <laughs> Both of you, yeah, hallelujah. Let's surround them and Pastor will lead us. Uh, just lift up your voices and begin to pray. Just lift up your voices. Holy Ghost, we give you glory. My God, we give all the glory. We give all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive, 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 receive. receive. Receive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. My Kayandala Baba Baba Baba. Oh Moko Yandala Baba Baba. Anointing fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. Lord, let your anointing. Let the anointing of the Lord set them apart. Receive the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Receive impartation. Impartation to do exploits. Receive strength and power. Holy Ghost. Oh, let the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Glide and ride upon the wings of grace in the name of Jesus. Do mighty works for the Lord. Let it flow. May your head never lack oil. In the name of Jesus, may you be preserved and protected. May you stand through the fires and the flames of fire the rough. You will walk through the, the waters and you will not be drowned by the circumstances of life. You will always rise and stand tall above the storms of life. May it be well with you. And may the Lord bless your progeny. I pray, as the man of the, of the house has said, may you change into a new person. May your soul and your spirit be recalibrated. In the unction of the Holy Ghost, may you be saturated 
in the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that the power of the Spirit will animate your, Holy, your spirits, man, to begin to do an amazingly wonderful things in this house. May your life attract hundreds and thousands unto Christ. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Amen. Let them stand up. Hallelujah. Bring me the tray. Hallelujah. Keep facing me. Uh, ministers, don't go. I got a few things to do quickly. Yeah, you bring it. Hallelujah. In your discharge of your ministerial duty as a deaconess, I present to you, Regina, a towel symbol to wipe tables and wipe people's feet. Pastor Kobe said, at times this is painful. People who are opposing, making things difficult. But grace will help you to do that. This towel is a symbol. Jesus name. At times, you'll be called to counsel people, to comfort them. This is a veil of oil. May you rub them in their wounds and in their hurt. We live in a generation where everybody has an opinion on everything. The word have I hidden in my heart that I will not sin against you. Every answer on the surface of this planet head, the answers, solutions are here. If only you take time to read it and give it to them. Paul says, such as I have, I give it to you. Amen. Receive the word of God. Amen. And on behalf of a life ministry, your certification of ordination. May the Lord bless you. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Antinese, this is a tie I have known you for long than Regina. I've seen your consistency your dedication and your passion. But at times, you might not agree with people and it is perfectly okay. Even in your disagreement, wipe behind their back. They will make a mess. Smile like you do always and wipe it. The oil of gladness. When people are in a painful, you are being ordained to be the overseer of all the youth ministries. Youth comes with a lot of challenges. May the veil of this oil represent the presence of God to minister to them. The word of God, ancient word, never fail. Changing you first, changing others. Always go to the word. It's not I feel. We all feel at times, but let this be the final word. May the Lord bless you. Let this be a reminder that on this day, a great man of God came. It was not planned that way. Reverend Dr. Joseph also been biased here. And Reverend Patrick, even Friday, not knowing that you were a candidate, made a prophetic declaration. So for me, I am at peace. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, turn around. I now present to you your latest Dickenesses, Anthony Edusei and Regina Kweku. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Finally, before you sit down, now let your, your, your spouses join you. Hallelujah. Kufi, come and stand here. Let's put our hands together upon them. I know, please forgive me, Africans, at times we might have emergency meeting at church, after church. Don't go and sit down and squeeze your face that... I need my fufu. So we are going to pray. I want you to stretch off your hands and pray for them as a family couple. And when they f we, we finish preaching, then Reverend Dr. Joseph will pray for them as a family. Somebody lift up your hands. Somebody talk to God. Talk to God. Your prayer is important. Paul said, I pray for me that all trances shall be given. Church, can we pray for the Edusa family? Can we pray for the Kweku family? It is not an individual thing. It's a team thing. 
it's a team they work together they will cooperate together their spouses will encourage them they will encourage them they will lift them up they will not let them feel guilty together they will serve God and as they serve God as a family the Lord will bless and keep them you go far in Jesus name Father, we want to say thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. It's a good day to give you praise because you are the orchestrator of good things. The Bible says, for you know the end from the beginning. And we know that this is part of the expected end of your daughters. For I know the plans I have towards you, say as the Lord, a plan to give you peace and to give you an expected end. Therefore, Lord, we say thank you. Amen. We give you praise. On behalf of, the, of their families, mm. Father, we come to exalt you and to say whatever you have begun, Lord, you will bring it to an expected end. I pray that by this ordination, by this oil, increase blessings, favor, abundance, open door shall be the portion of this family. In the name of Jesus, we declare that in blessing you bless them, in favor you favor them, in increase you shall increase them. Oh, their home shall be prosperous, their home shall be blessing. And our Bible says, and Obed in doom have bought the blessing of the Lord in his house. The oil was in his house. And after six months, the Bible said favor came upon the house. After this oil, after this oil, after this anointing, after this ordination, blessings, 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 favor increase shall be the portion of this family in the name of Jesus by addition of this people to leadership to leadership wisdom counsel divine nature shall be the portion of this house in the name of Jesus in wisdom we shall increase they will bring godly counsel to the man of God they will bring godly support to the man of God Trouble shall not come near the dwelling. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we welcome our latest deaconess, Regina and Anthony. Somebody say congratulations. congratulations. Shall we be seated? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand there. Let us come and greet you. Me, I will stand here. Congratulations. Yeah. Antonis, congratulations. To God be the glory. Great thing. Shall we come and greet them, the leaders? Mm. So loved the world that he gave us. God bless you. Atonement for sin and Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth. Oh, I thought somebody who wave his hands to the Lord. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, God, to the Father through Jesus, the Son. And give him the glory, great thing. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shall we take our seat? Hallelujah. God bless you. Once again, congratulations. On the program, supposed to be a selection, but since Reverend Patrick likes songs too much, we'll do the scripture reading. Then when we finish the scripture reading, I will do the introduction. So that when Zoe finished ministering the songs, 
man of God will come so that pastor doesn't walk back and forth and stress myself unnecessarily. Hallelujah. Shall we call on our dear sister Chimdadia as she takes this? Oh, oh, is it Chesetori? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's welcome a beautiful young lady. This lady was raised in the house. I remember her. And she's now wonderful God fearing. God bless you. My scripture reading is going to be taken from Genesis chapter 26, verses 22 to 30. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will multiply your descendants and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place and his servants dug another well. One day, King Abimelech came from Gerar with his advisor, Ahuzeth, and also Pickle, his army commander. Why have you come here, Isaac asked. You obviously hate me since you kicked me off your land. They replied, we can plainly see that the Lord is with you, so we want to enter into a sworn treaty with you. Let's make a covenant. Swear that you will not harm us just as we have never troubled you. We have always treated you well and we sent you away from us in peace. And now look how the Lord has blessed you. So Isaac prepared a covenant feast to celebrate the treaty, and they ate and drank together. Amen. And the Lord prepared a feast. When you make a covenant with the Lord, he will prepare a feast for you. Yesterday, we celebrated with a good meal and a powerful dancing. Hallelujah. But because the dance, David dancing is so powerful, we we'll reserve it for another time. Because if I show you, some people will backslide this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I want to welcome every one of you for making it this morning. We, we celebrate to, 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 to get that strength to move on. Because at times, the life of Jenny can be very challenging. And the enemy will always beat you with the negativity. So once in a while, it is okay to celebrate and see where the Lord has brought you. And as we celebrate, we want to thank the, the Brobes family. The, yes, go ahead. The, the Ashbury family, hallelujah. The Agnes family. These were people who were here from the first day in my house in Cedar Hill. There are some of them. Oh, and Sister Janet, uh, Jen Chineboa also, hallelujah. We have come far, and for that I am grateful for all of you. The word of God will be coming very soon. But let me take this time to also honor some elders in the house. Help me to appreciate Papa Joshua and Mama Sylvia. Oh, I thought Pastor Kobe was Ah, you have failed, hallelujah. Papa Joshua, Mama, you are welcome. In life journey, God brings people at every stages. It is up to you to hold them and make good use of it. And I want to thank all of you who have come here to help to celebrate. May God meet each one of you at the point of your need. I'm taking this to say that the man who is going to preach today, his church has been one of the instrumental to the success of a life story. If you know that when we started this ministry, there's a big church along the road called Lake Point. It's a church congregation of about 10,000. They decided to partner with us for a long time. And how did we get to know them? Somebody from Pastor Patrick Church introduced Jeff to us and the rest of history. Somebody put your hands together. So for me, when it comes to All Nations Baptist Church in Columbus, Ohio, I am always grateful. And this man is also a very wonderful man. In our midst this morning to celebrate is one that is not a stranger to us, Reverend Dr. 
Osubempa. He's in the city doing an extra work. Somebody, let's appreciate this great man of God, Papa. You are welcome. Excellent. Hallelujah. He heard he say, Ah, Papa, how can I not be part of the celebration? And for that, I'm grateful. Ladies and gentlemen, today we'll be blessed to hear from the servant of God. I want to I don't want to waste time, you know, I've been doing a lot. But Reverend Patrick Amwa is a seasoned minister. He's the senior pastor of All Nations Baptist Church, Columbus, Ohio. He comes to this table with a lot of rich experience. He has been a missionary evangelist. He's a community leader where he is. He helps the Vietnamese to establish other immigrants. For me, his ministry is a holistic. He doesn't only deal with the soul of the person, but the totality. And he would like to call it that we are our kinsman's redeemer. He's very sharp. He's a theologian. He has his own weird humor. He's still fighting with me that he doesn't understand that why Dallas is God's city. I mean, God told me, and you can't change it. Hallelujah. So after... Uh, Zoe Minister, the next person you will see is going to be Reverend Patrick Amwa, all the way from Columbus, Ohio. And before Zoe is singing, Reverend Patrick also happens that uh, there's a young man here called, what's his name? Alfred. Oh, by the way, Re Reverend Patrick is married to a beautiful lady called Lady Florence, and that is uh, the brother in law of Reverend Patrick. And so let's appreciate. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, shall we stand up with a clap offering and let's welcome, before he even comes, the servant of God, Reverend Patrick Amwa. Can I get a big shout? Amen. Hallelujah. So we take it from here. I am dying. <laughs> I am died, O oh Lord, I have heard thy voice, and he told the love to me, but I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, nearer blessed Lord, to Thy precious. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Keep on standing. I, you know, at times, pain can make you forget things. Hallelujah. Please, shall we be seated? I forgot. Uh, Lady Anthony's parents are here. Please apologize. Forgive me. Please stand up and let's appreciate them for giving us a, such a beautiful lady. Oh, mommy. Oh, you can do better. Hallelujah. The parents, ma thank you, ma'am. It's, yeah, I can never forget you. Thank you so much. You are welcome, Mama. I apologize. I remember when we were painting this house for the first time. She came in her jeans and she's painting. I said, wow. No. Nah, I know you come from a good family. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, the ancient word is coming. Would you please stand up? Welcome the servant of God, Reverend Patrick Amwa. Oh, somebody give him a life welcome. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Please be seated. Amen. You see, I have to jump the way, Pastor. You know, <laughs> that is very powerful, you know, encouraging me to. Um, deliver the word of God. God bless you so much, uh, my brothers and my sisters um, in the Lord. Um, I consider it a great opportunity um, to be here. And uh, like Pastor had said a couple of um, times, that um, this has been in the cooking for a um, couple of uh, years that uh, finally God made it to materialize. And we all say thank you, um, Lord, um, for your goodness. In his own time, he makes all things beautiful. I am really um, excited and overwhelmed to see the wonderful things that God is doing in your midst. I want to thank the set man of God, my, my, my senior brother, and the senior apostle. I call him senior apostle. Hallelujah. A great um, missionary man that his heart bleeds for souls. And uh, he always would challenge you. You know, when it comes to my church, any topic you give him, he will talk about losses. He will talk uh, and he will come there. Hallelujah. Uh, it tells you about uh, the seed in him. And he's such an inspiration. Hallelujah. God bless you. And Mama Comfort, may the Lord bless you. You know, yesterday um, we, we had a chat. And uh, I told her that, so you were the comfort that Reverend Sibasanti kept talking about everywhere. And then, you know, he would mention your name. And uh, when we were in Ghana, anytime he came to my church, he would mention about it. And I, when he finished, I said, also for this illustration you have given, this is the third time here. So change it. <laughs> you know, they'll tell you, as for you, just see me, I want to see me, I want to. Hallelujah. So we thank God that destiny divine has brought us together. And Reverend Doctor, may the Lord bless you. You see, we have been... Uh, laboring on the same fold somewhere. And uh, I don't know for some reason we have not met. But I think for quite some years, almost about the past three years, we've been, you know, 
for six years there. You know, so we've been doing this for a while. And every year um, we, we do it um, together, myself, um, doctor, and then another brother in Chicago that we um, support a certain church together. And uh, we've never met. And today we are meeting for the first time. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. This year I did the second week. And then you had a big orgasm, so you came for the last. Amen. And I, I, I'm sure that they were blessed. Hallelujah. We thank God so much. And I want to thank you, church, um, for supporting this ministry. Yesterday, um, during the, the dinner, I challenge you that um, when you are under a special anointing, tap into that oil and get fattened under that grace, and the Lord will elevate, and God will honor you. God is faithful. You see, it is not under any anointing that we flourish. There are certain anointings that are exceptional, and this one is unique. And I want to encourage you that continue to serve and remain faithful. Be, be predictable, be consistent in doing it. It's that consistency is the secret. You, you make it a habit. Let it be native to you to serve. With all your heart, you serve like your life depends on it. And God will remember you. He can't forget when we labor in his vineyard, it touches his heart. God remembers you. When you read Malachi chapter 3, read the verse 16 down there. That in the time of trouble, I shall remember the righteous from the wicked. I will remember in times of trouble. God does remember the righteous. I had a church member. When I was in Ghana, that this lady had um, two of her breasts moved and due to breast cancer. It was a very terrible situation. She was in a relationship with a young man. But her condition, I don't know, for some reason, the guy, they were just even about to start counseling. She loved the Lord. She would be in the church. She was a cleaner. She was an usher. She was everything in the church. She would come to our house. She would serve. She would do all kinds of things. Even before I got married, you know, only that there was a you know, limitation. If uh, uh, you are not married, you don't come to my house. But she would go, you know, I was living in a compound house. And then she would go and fetch water. And then, you know, the compound house, they had some gates. And then she would go and put the water there. And then my neighbors would tell me, uh, Pastor, they have brought your water. <laughs> and she would be the, be the one that would be bringing the water. Church, she would clean, uh, clean there. And our, where our church building um, is, was, um, was kind of a water lock. And sometimes the place will, will flood all the offices. This lady would go and clean and wash, just like Mama Comfort. And then um, this guy just abandoned the relationship, and he left. It wasn't easy for this girl, and they've been together for a while. And I encourage her that this man we serve. I have worked with him for years. I've been with the Lord for about 40 years. This year, I'll be in ministry for 27 years. And I know God cannot fail, even when I am unfaithful. He's remained. God is just addicted to faithfulness. It is in his nature. And then one day, I was there, and he said that, a gentleman in the U.S., you know, had seen a picture and 
wanted to marry her. I said, no, you don't just marry like that. He said he likes you or he wants to marry you. He said, the guy just said that I want to marry you. First time he spoke, he said, I just want to marry you. He said, I, but I don't know you. I've not even told my, my pastor. I said, if he said that, may the Lord bless that. They got that the cancer, you know, um, really affected her. And the early stage of the marriage, um, they told her that she can't give birth because of all that she went through. But I'm saying this to the glory of God. Now they live in Chicago with five children. <laughs> Who says God is not faithful? I just want to encourage you. You see, we have seen it. We have experienced it. Myself and my wife, our first sister, my sweetheart. I love my wife to death. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's because uh, her, her, her brother is here. That's why I'm saying that. <laughs> uh, are we on video? <laughs> you people, you have to descend. And then when I'm talking like that, you... You see, Cabrera and Esther too are there. They are laughing. They have heard the story before, so they are laughing. I'm sure Esther will be there. there. He goes again. <laughs> Hallelujah. We were in the Lord and uh, we served the Lord all, you know, all our lives. And uh, we were told that we can never give birth. My wife, there was no, she was not a childbearing candidate woman. In fact, we. I, we, I told her that we will not pray about it again. When we, we got to a point or so, I said, we are not going to pray about it yet. I didn't marry you because I wanted you to bear me children. I love because I love you. You know, giving birth is the extras. I didn't come into this. Me, my, fa my family, we are so many. I have so many grandchildren in my family. We are so large, and she too, they have a very huge family. We don't need any more people. I mean, the two of us, we are enough. And then one day, we had a divine encounter. I traveled to U.S., and I went back, and one day, my wife told me that the Lord visited her. That was the first time my wife said something. You know, when she dreams, she doesn't remember. But that dream, she remembered. It wasn't a dream. It was kind of... Uh, you, you, unique supernatural experience. And I believed her. And she told me that the Lord visited three men in a kind of a trance. And then they, they came and then they told her that a year by this time. And that year, that was 2007, we had our first child. After living together for about six years, and the Lord visited us. And God blessed us. God is alive. Now, so how many children do I have? I've forgotten. Now, you see, I have such a large tribe members. You see, now the clan is so huge. God has blessed us with two girls and two boys. What else? And the way the arrangement were, first one was a girl, and I said, if you, the girl alone is a nation, and that was enough. By the time we realized there was a boy. And I said, now I'm getting older. You see, I'm just getting older. So God, thank you. This too, this is a miracle. And by the time I realized there was another girl. And that one, that my wife herself said that it is over. And so we said it's over. So we're just sleeping, thinking about our own business. And one day she said that it appears that there has been another divine visitation. I said, ask for this one. He said that it has, you know, there is a immaculate, you know, <laughs> you know, there has been an immaculate conception. And as I didn't do anything, I just been sleeping. I was just, be, I've been minding my business and look at this. So we have a little one, there, a seven year old. And I look at how old this man is, you know. And they had a seven year. God is good. God is good. Let us pray. Our strength, thy grace, sorrow, thy word, our end, 
the glory of fire. Our strength shall we stand. My andalalabos. My katayandalalabos. My andalalabos. Thy grace are rule, thy word and the glory, glory of the Sing it one more time with me. Our strength. Our strength thy grace. to pray for the strength of the Lord even as we come to the end of this celebration. I want you to pray that the favor of the Lord shall locate you. You see, the favor of the Lord doesn't matter your location, but once it locates you, it changes your destiny. It changes your identity. It changes your origin. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter the, 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 the classification the doctors has given unto you. When the favor of God comes upon you, I tell you that your orbit changes. Your constellation is revived. Everything about you is re refreshed. Pray for the favor of the Lord. Church, lift up your voice and begin to pray. I want you to begin to pray for the favor of the Lord. As we come to the end of this uh, special celebration, lift up your voices and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. God, we give all the glory. We give you all the glory, Lord. Holy Ghost, we give all the glory. your spirit move over your people. Let it move. Wherever you are standing, just lift your hands. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. Let it move. Let it touch you. Let His Holy Ghost touch you. In the lalalalabos, and the lalabos. I hear the sound of healing. I hear the sound of restoration. I hear the sound of restoration. The Lord is restoring you. He is making all things new. Holy Ghost, we give you glory. The Lord is telling me that you have been going through a lot in this marriage. You've been treated, you've been thrashed, you've been disrespected, you've been violated. But the Lord is telling me that he's doing a brand new thing. He's doing a brand new thing. He is the Lord. A new page. A new page. May the Lord touch you. May the Lord strengthen you in the name of Jesus. I speak courage and boldness. May you have a new and a broader vision. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is telling me that you are here. 
You have been going through some anxieties and fear and uncertainties. The Lord says that he is your anchor and your buckler. He says that tell the righteous that it is well. I declare and I decree that it is well with you. If you can only set your eyes upon the Lord. I hear the sound of disappointment, but the Lord is telling me that there shall be an appointment, a supernatural appointment. In the name of Jesus, may you receive a supra abundant grace and favor. In the name of Jesus. God is doing some uttering of destinies. Realignment of destinies. Realignment of destinies. If your destiny had taken a detour, if you have experienced an obstruction and distraction and oppression and opposition, to this morning I decree that there is a realignment. There is a realignment. That says the Lord. Father, we give you glory. Please be seated. Father, we thank you for these prophetic oracles. May your name be exalted. Today I'm speaking, Pastor, with your permission and under um, the, the unction and anointing of this house. Today I'm speaking on flourishing through altars. Hallelujah. Pastor said, he will, no, I think that last Wednesday he said that he would take his time and take you through the altars. Different kinds of orders. May I um, do a little supplanting, you know, and then just borrow from you. Me, I don't want to take any credit, you know. I am here under an anointing. So what the set man has given me is what I want to share with you. Just some few thoughts. Hallelujah. Now, if you look at orders in the Bible, you know, um, I've been, I've been looking at it and uh, looking at trying to see when it all started. You know, an altar is a place for a sacrifice, okay, where a slaughter takes place. Now, if you look at the, the Greek word, the Hebrew word, misbiak, and a misbiak is a place where um, we do um, zabak. And Zabak is to sacrifice, to slaughter. Now, if you look at it, in terms of sacrifice itself, we can find the beginning of sacrifice from the very beginning, Genesis chapter number 3. When man sinned, and uh, God had come, and there had been uh, that engagement, uh, uh, Madam was saying, you see me, I didn't ask you about this woman, you yourself, you know, you brought that woman. It was the woman that made me to eat apple, and the woman said, it wasn't me. It was the serpent that you brought here that made me to eat, and all the holy balloons. But there was something very powerful that took place. That man became naked. Now, nakedness is a, uh, is a symbol of sin. And God's nature, his holiness abhors. He hates sin. He just can't stand sin. But he loves the sinner. So when they sin, they gain awareness of their sinfulness. You see, that is what sin does. You see, it will tell you that you will feel good, but let me tell you, you feel bad. It lies to you. It whispers lies. And, and kind of, you know, uh, groom you into an altar darkness. And that was exactly what happened to So when they became naked, and after the interaction, God had that, the conversation with them, and when they were about to be sacked, then the Bible says that God covered their nakedness with a skin of animals. And you see, that those animals had to be killed. So God was the first to offer 
himself a sacrifice. Because what the sacrifice does is that it atones, it propitiates your nakedness. So the, the, the pre-incarnation era before Christ, that sacrifice that was done, the first was God himself. But that was a partial sacrifice. But of course, an assurance of a greater sacrifice to be made through our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. He that came to absorb our sins and atone for it. He became our kinsman, Redeemer. Just to redeem and rescue us from the outer destruction and the power of sin. So God was the first, okay, to offer sacrifice. And of course, the Cain and Abel thing, you know, that was also. But there wasn't a place for sin until you go through Genesis chapter 8, verse number 20. When Noah was the first to offer an altar sacrifice. He set up an altar. That you look at the biblical record. That was the first time. And from there we have had several altars. You know, earthen altars, stone altars, and the tabernacle altars, and the temple altars, and all forms of altars. That also had emerged. But metaphorically, Altars means more than just a place, but a space, a spiritual, you know, orbit where we establish a foundation of our total dependence and our acts of worship of God. It's a reminder of us. To our creator. So altars are not just where we did some sacrifice and somebody prayed there. But it's, a, it's an establishment where we affirm our dependence on God. So you see in the Bible anytime a sacrifice is made. The person is professing a faith. He's making a confession. That God is my all in all. So you see, our church, church in itself, as a shrine is also an altar in itself. Because it's a place. I like technology and virtual thing that we do. And, and uh, you know, but we have to be here, this location, the address. It's a place. It's, there's an altar. That we come together to celebrate the Lord in a very special way. And in the text that pastor gave us, in Genesis, Genesis chapter number 26, where we read that Isaac built several such altars to worship God. In Beersheba, he raised one. In Ezek, he raised another one there. And then also in Sitna, he raised. And he raised all these altars in the face of opposition and adversities. Quarrels and hostilities were going on. And it was in the midst of that that he raised these altars to affirm his faith. To renew his bond and covenant with the Lord. That no matter what he will bring at me. I have an anchor. That my faith is buried deep. In my Savior's love. That no matter what you do. I am unmovable. And I'm unshakable. So. When we gather in this. Great shrine. It's not just a church building. It's a symbol of our faith. I tell people. It's not just buildings. But it reflects our values. 
Our core values as believers, we gather as family. So family is important to us. That is why church will not allow you just go and say because you are mad with your wife. God. No, it has more than you, just your marriage. Because your marriage itself is a sacrament. So when we come together, it's a sacrament. So you breaching it becomes a sacrilege. So we will not allow you. We come together as a sacred, a holy altar of God. And we serve. And we cry out unto our God. Altars matter. Altars matter. Because they are the roots, the roots of our faith. And the reason God also flourishes us. So let me share some few thoughts and then I'll be done. Altars keep our work with God central. You see the verse number 23 of 26. We've been reading it uh, and I said we can stay here for one year. We wouldn't be going anywhere. Now if you look at the verse number 23 that Isaac builds an altar. From there Isaac moved to Beersheba where the Lord appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the Lord thy God do not be afraid. So right there in Beersheba, he raised an altar just to remember the goodness of God. To make God the center. Have you re- if you have read, uh, you know, uh, Chinua Achibe's book, Things Fall Apart. If the center will not hold, then things will fall apart. I have a copy. To, when I was coming to, you know, I was reading it. You have yours too, oh my God. And I had, I, have, I had all the books, most of them. You know, and uh, his one thing he says is that if the center will not hold, then things will fall. Confusion and chaos. Things will go, you know, hectic scatter. Things, nothing will stand. Now, if Christ isn't the center of your marriage. If he doesn't become the altar, the centrality of your total existence, if you don't make God that altar, that personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, then things will not work. I told once, I told my church, I said, now you see, when your husband is bothering you, don't stand and argue and exchange words. And now, when you do, you are playing the, the match of hell. That is why, that is where people are going to hell. That is how they, 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 they handle situations. Now, if you are, your destination is in heaven, you don't behave like that. Because our weapons are not kinder. They are mighty through God to the demolition, the destruction of every stronghold. And we take captive every thought and every imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. You see, we do not war as the world does. So it is not a contest. Am I, you and husband, who is this and that? It is not a contest for privilege and power. You see, the moment the quarrel begins, you know that there is a spiritual, there is a cosmic contention. And so I say that when the confusion begins, just turn your back somewhere and then face the altar and then begin to pray. You go to work and somebody supervisor somewhere is bothering you. If you are a nurse, if you are not careful, they will write you up if you are in Ohio. We have some demons there. <laughs> if you are in Ohio, are we, are we live? In fact, when I get to the airport, they will deport me. You see that they will be writing you up and other things. Yesterday, we were talking about it with my family. You know, my in-law, uh, uh, you know, Renita, she has been spoiling me. Since I came, she's been treating me like a king. Meanwhile, in Ohio, I'm nobody. 
Is he, when Kwabra in Esther were in Columbus, they didn't do me nothing. You see, and today when I came, the way, you know, when I came, the way I've been treated here. But you can't change my mind to, you know, stay. I'm going back. Hallelujah. They said, uh, God, this is God's home. God is here. I'm taking your God away. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you make God the center of your life, when the troubles are coming, just begin to pray. Once my church member called me that he supervised the way that the lady is behaving. I said that the lady has become possessed. Don't worry. We are going to treat this thing like you are treating a demon. I said, if you take a break, when you take a break, can you go into your car? I said, yeah, pastor can go. To I said, your car is a shrine, a prayer shrine. They get into the car. You see, me, my, my church, if you, and I know yet you do, if you buy a new car, we will dedicate. You buy a used car, we will dedicate. If you buy a Pascale car, we will dedicate. And you see, it's your dwelling. You have been, and we, because I tell them, I say that in your car, your car must be a sacred space, a special space where you encounter God. You see what the songs that you, you these are altars. Sit in your car and you are playing. Sometimes I sit in my car and listen to my sermons. And I've never graded myself well when I'm listening back. You see, when I have about, you know, about two days, three days to my sermons, I don't listen to the previous ones. Because I rate myself so badly. But I still, I do listen. And then I told her that go into your car. And begin to moka yanderebo saka in the book in the hay. Jamaica, Jamaica. Yeah. Hallelujah. Morocco, 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 Algeria. Hey, Zimbabwe, Cameroon. That begin to bukalata rambori yandere. Reka in the masai nda. You know, and then she did that. And she said that was awful. He went inside. And then the lady was suddenly transformed. And he was like, oh, hello. How are you doing? He said, oh, I, oh when I entered, did I greet? <laughs> it's like she was kind of behaving in a very weird way, in a strange way. I said, that is the power of prayer. When... Prayer becomes your altar. We serve a living God. One of my church members, somebody bothered her. He says, oh, for me, my licenses, I will leave this job and go for another one before I lose my licenses. Because she wrote the board like five times. He said, I don't want to lose it. I said, so what happened? He said, somebody is tormenting me and torturing me. I said, this one will go off. We will treat this person like demon. You know, and then I wrote the person's name. And on top of it, I wrote Diabolos. <laughs> and so whenever I am praying on my stick, my prayer, I have an altar in my office. And then I wrote, I have written Diabolos and the person's name. And then when I am praying, I pray like I'm dealing with Diabolos. It was like two weeks and then she told me that the president of the company had called her that they want to elevate her position and raise her above the person that was torturing her. Hallelujah. Who says that we don't have a God? When you make God central, you will not fall apart when the center is held in tandem. The Lord will grant you a stay. You will be steady. All test here, our work and business is God word. You see also in verse number 25. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshipped the Lord. He set up his camp at that place. And his servant dug another well. The man increased in flourishing, in prosperity, in blessings. He kept, you see, he kept advancing. When we, 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 we make our businesses, 
an altar of the Lord. God will preserve and protect you. Last year, one of my members who is into IT, and you know those, those of you in IT, like some of them like contract, you do like two years and you are fired. Now they are firing a lot of people in the IT. It's got very, very uh, unstable and unsteady area for to work. I don't know about the origin, but where I come from, many of them going through those kind of crises. And uh, I prayed and I, I said, that, come, this job is an altar. And I know this gentleman is so faithful. Also, he really gives tight. Oh, I tell you, and I look, I check. <laughs> oh, I do check. If you don't give tight, me, I'm not so nice with you. Uh, you see, you don't give tight. Uh, uh, now, the offerings, they, 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 they give zero. They come in, hey, hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. As for tight, that one we can see. Yeah, you say, oh, you, Jesus, the woman that gave the widow's might, everybody saw. Also, that one we see, oh. The woman who gave the widow's tight, the a might, the widow's might. You see, Jesus said that. You see, as, at least for Jesus, if he had said that, oh, the woman said it. But he said, you see, of all the people, she, and everybody, because that was a flat place like this, that everybody put the money there. So the, the rich people, when they bring their money, you see, they will come with their bodyguards and everything, and they will come and give. You know, bounty, they put it there. And then the poor will also come and give their coins. So the disciples, everybody saw that one. So that one we can see. And if you are not helping us, you are undermining us. When you are not bringing your 10%. Please do. It helps the ministry of God. It makes the gospel go places. And it brings down the kingdom of God. It honors it. And let me tell you, your giving is an altar. We'll talk about that one very soon. But your businesses must become the author of the Lord. When you are working, take some time, five minutes, just begin to reflect on the Lord and pray in the business that, that when you are doing the job, you say that God, this place shall be my security. I will remain here and I will expand, I will grow. The kind of uh, uh, firing Google last week just um, fired over a thousand people and uh, Amazon is laying off so many people and then you are in that job and you begin to wonder that am I going to be fired? No, you are not going to be fired because of the altar of the Lord. You have made an altar in the name of the Lord in that job and God will honor you. And let me tell you about your businesses being God word. When you serve the Lord, it's an altar. Deacon, deaconesses, serve the Lord. Me, I have deacons in my church. He knows them. They are seasoned brothers and sisters. You see, some of them are old enough to give birth to me. And they are still serving. Serving the Lord faithfully. You come to my church, these elderly people, the way they run around and the young people, they have their hands in their pocket and standing at the gate of the church. You know, I don't know what, what they have eaten. They keep on moving like this. You know, they keep on moving. Leave them to move. Leave them to move. If, go, if we go and stop the motion, things will happen. Just leave them. Let them move. I don't know what is going on in their brains. I don't know if their brains are torn or something. You see, like you see that, that they, 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 they're standing there moving. And they see these dickens carrying stuff, and then they'll, be, they'll give you way. Come and pass. You know, and they stand there shaking like this. I, I, I get there, I greet them. How are you? Blessings. You know, you see yourself when you see them, leave them to be moving. Let them continue in their rhythm. Do nothing. Don't talk about them. No gossip. Just allow them to move. Some time ago, you used to move like that. You used to be swinging like a pendulum. You too, yourself. More kayande. Hallelujah. So serving the Lord is also an altar. The Paul said in Colossians chapter number 3, verse number 23, that you do it as unto the Lord. Serve the Lord. God we serve is faithful. 
And finally, altars unite our hearts in ministry and our services. Isaac continued in his services. The Bible says in Galatians chapter number 6 verse 9, Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Don't give up. Persistency, consistency, perseverance. Remain steady in the Lord. In service. And you see, I, also, I won't end without talking about marriage one more time. Oh. Because marriage has become a target of the devil in this end time. But let me tell you, marriage between you and your spouse, and there is a third party is God, making marriage a sacred institution. And you and your wife, you didn't just meet to meet, to, to, to marry. You were invited to the table. You are guests. And the third party is God. So if you grow weary, go to the host for strength. And make him the altar, the center of that marriage. Humble yourself under his authority. And God will always make a way. Now, pers perspective is very important. How you see marriage, the way you see it is how you respond to it. If you see that, you know, like, I willingly married you. My, me, myself, I married you. Now, God knew you. He called you when you were just a drop of blood in your mother's womb. He knew you. It is God that had ordained that the two of you will come. You see, when man was made, he, he didn't suggest Adam. That is what Adam said that the woman you made, the woman you made, you brought her. Man had no contribution when God was bringing marriage. Man had no part in it. Man didn't make any suggestion. It was the doing of God. So when you come together as couples, it is the doing of the Lord. No matter the circumstance, see it as sacred and respond accordingly and it all shall be well. Even in the face of challenges. Brethren, when we make the Lord the altar of our lives, we will flourish and we will prosper. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer. I will ask Reverend Doctor to come and pray. As of once you are here, um, we will share the job. Hallelujah. I think that um, Papa just, wow. I've, I've taught on all tests. Yeah. I've taught on all tests. I have done conferences with all tests. I can even write a book on altar. But I never knew that serving the Lord was an altar. I never knew that serving the Lord was an altar. Wow. Let's bow our heads. I believe that this anniversary. It's not just an anniversary, it's, it's supposed to reignite your spirit. We celebrate what God does, but we also use it as a platform to reaffirm our commitment to him. As a church, as an individual, and all of that. Any church that is not interested in the well-being of the souls of men is no more a church. The desire of every church is to desire that souls move forward. Souls are saved. People who don't know Christ will be saved. And people who know him, who have lost their touch with him, will be reignited. And if you know anything about our father, you know that he is, he is a soulish person. Today as we pray, 
Papa just said, if you want to recommit your life to Christ, it is, re- it is the reason why we are, we are meeting here. Please, everybody has bowed with all humility. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, we want to pray with you. Or you want to say, Pastor, it's been, it's been a challenge. Yesterday, one of my sons sent me a text. He says, I am struggling. I said, thank God for being honest. I want to pray with you this morning. If you are going through some challenge and you want us to pray, maybe it might not necessarily be anything wild, but you want us to pray with you. I have the permission. Within the next three minutes, I want to pray with you. Say, I'm, my marriage is going through a moment. My son is giving me a headache. My daughter, my job. I need, I need a breakthrough. Something got to break. I want to pray with you. Please, all heads bow. With all humility, you can just rise up. Come to me this morning. And with the backing of our fathers, we will just release a prayer. And I believe that God will touch you. Please, don't be ashamed. There is no need to be ashamed. Any struggling you are going through this morning, there is an anointing in this place to be released into your life that will break the yoke and set you free. Any lack, any lack in your life, there is an anointing that is strong to break any yoke. Any limitation that is set upon you, your family, your children, your marriage, your relationship, The Bible says he came to seek and to save. This morning, there is an anointing that is here to seek and to save you from every difficulty and every challenge. It doesn't matter what you find yourself. There is an anointing that breaks every yoke. And this morning, our Father has already released an anointing. There is an anointing in this place. There is an anointing in this place that will break every yoke, break every limitation. In the name of Jesus, everybody lift up your hands uh, and stretch your hands over these people and release a prayer over them that Lord, may may the battle be the battle, the loss. uh, May the battle be the loss. uh, May the battle be the loss. uh, May the battle be the loss. uh, Every yoke shall be broken. 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 In the name of Jesus, there is a release of an anointed. There is power in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voice and pray. Somebody lift your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. And release an anointing. Lord. One of my daughters came to me the other day says, My son, it doesn't matter how many times we teach him, he's still not good in school. Every day there is a report about my son. My son is struggling in school. I said, there is an anointing that can break that yoke. Jesus. I laid my hands in oil and placed it on his head. And I said, from today, Jesus. you must understand that every situation has an ear. Yes. Everything that has a name has an ear. Ha, and you, oh, am I talking to somebody here? Ha, money has an ear. I said, money has an ear. And today we call your money. Are you in this church at all? Yes. I said, we call your money into existence in the name of Jesus. We call healing into existence. Every difficult matter, by the next, the measure of his name, we call them to order. Good marriage, we call it to order. Because anything that has a name, has an ear. There is an anointing here. Can I have the oil? Thank you, Papa. Thank you, sir. Lift your everybody, please. If you need an anointing to do something, I, I, I say, come. The Lord will touch you. Oh, we mark you with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We mark you with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. It shall be well with you. 
It shall be well with you. Let gratitude be your portion. Ah, hey, Hatuna Mahata, Kedesa, Kradusi Kada. In the name of Jesus, my God, my God, my God, my God. Let's see the behest the head. Let get the behest. Ida Bahasa. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, don't go. Please, let me pray. It's all right. Let it. Let me pray. Father, this morning there is a release of an anointing. Can you respond, church? Amen. Can you respond, church? Amen. You might not be here, but there is an anointing that knows your tomorrow. And that anointing will work for you right now. Amen. So respond. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We declare. Yes, freedom. Amen. Liberty. Amen. Favor. Amen. Open, door. Open door. Every yoke is broken. Amen. Every yoke is broken. Every setback is broken. In the name of Jesus. We declare liberty. We declare liberty. We declare liberty. Hallelujah. We declare freedom. I release an anointing over you, my son. Kaduli kadabaha, legradu si kradi kradusa, panini mi atosa, kadabaha sa. Hey, kadibiri andos. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My God, woman of God, take your miracle. Take your miracle. Amen. Now, take it. Take it. Take it, sir. May the Lord grace you. May the Lord favor you. Lord, we declare. Touch our mother. In the name of Jesus. Touch our father. Touch our mother. Touch our mother. In the name of Jesus. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. I give myself away. Somebody worship the Lord. God bless you. Let's turn up. I keep myself away. So we can go back to the of the saints Paul said that if I have ministered spiritual things to you what prevent you from ministering physical things we minister health to him rejuvenation clarity boldness passion unction to function you function in the office of an apostolic you function in the prophetic you function in the office of a pastor you function in the office of a teacher 
may grace to function in all the fivefold ministry shall be your portion so that your generation shall be blessed any virtue that has gone out from you we pray for a replenishing you go back safely and you say indeed the lord has blessed thank you for your servant thank you that he's a gift to many not only to his local church but to the body of christ we give you praise and for you because you came today whether you came to visit whether you came to witness the ordination may the lord meet you at the point of your need as a servant of the house i proclaim it upon you i confirm it upon you and i confess it upon you in jesus name and somebody shout and say amen put your hands together for jesus somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah what do we say to pastor patrick i didn't hear you for the last time, God bless put your hands together for Jesus. Let's call on Lady Michelle as he takes the offering. Hallelujah. It's offering time. Oh, your 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 response is weak. It's offering time. You know, I don't want to go there, but Pastor went there. From this service, some people need to repent too. If you don't pay tight. Hallelujah. Offering time. Blessings time. How many of you have been blessed by the word that came? I know I have been. As you bring your substance, please remember all the wonderful things God has done. For us here at A-Life, we're remembering 19 years of God's faithfulness. As a congregation, we're remembering many years, many testimonies, many miracles that have occurred in this church. Amen. If you're writing a check, please make it payable to A-Life Baptist Church. If you're giving via Zelle, Please give it by the, uh, the number that is on the screen. Amen. Can we please rise to pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you especially for 19 years of your wonders, 19 years of your faithfulness. We bring our substances, our, our offerings, our tithes with a grateful heart. And we say that, Lord, we are grateful. Thank you. Thank you for how far you have brought us. Thank you for all the prayers that you have heard and answered. Thank you for all the battles you have fought on our behalf, the known and the unknown. Thank you for, oh Lord, the many things you are doing on our behalf, on the behalf of the congregation, and for every need that you have met. As we bring our substance, we pray that it will be of sweet perfume before you. We pray that, Lord, you will, it would honor you. We pray that, Lord, you would accept it. Father, we pray that, oh Lord, in the pockets that are not breaking substances, that they are worshipped. Let your dance, let your song be of sweet perfume before you. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Great things he has done. Greater things he will do.
have to readjust your time a little bit. Please just give us 10 minutes out of here. Don't leave without the blessing of these people. But Pastor uh, Reverend Patrick wants to do something as he's being led by the Lord. It's not on the program. Pastor, why don't you come? And uh, yeah, both of you come. Yeah. We do these things not to show off, mm. but to show example. Paul writes and says, if you go greet this one, because he allowed his house to be used for this. Mm. They can title this something, and you know I will be in trouble. But <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, yesterday when I came around, and I saw this amazing piece of Arts, and uh, I asked Pastor, you know, it's so beautiful, and uh, MODX, and uh, when I go to Columbus, we we'll see, <laughs> you know, and I took the picture, <laughs> and I asked him when they bought it, and he said I was awful. Uh, somebody just brought it this week, and I said who, and he said it in Taidos. That he doesn't want anybody to know. I'm say, I said that one day he lied. <laughs> Everybody will know this. My brother, this is an altar. You have raised an altar for the Lord. And it's destiny that has brought us together as the prophets of the Most High to anoint this altar and to bless you. And our God is a covenant keeping God. Yeah. You, you, are you? Is your wife? Oh, your wife is the one who sings. <laughs> Please. Come and stand by your husband. Come and stand by your husband. You have to. Yes, you do. I'm a living testimony. I will pray for a divine visitation. Amen. We pray for divine because of this order that the Lord will remember you and visit you in a very special way. Church, how do you feel about it? I believe that you are touched. One thing I want to ask of you before myself and Reverend Doctor dedicate and then pray for them. I want you to pour your spirit out for them. Pray and pour your spirit. That God bless this couple. You see, this altar is so visible. It is loud. It speaks. You see, the altar of God speaks. It has a voice. And this is very powerful. How it animates God's goodness when we come together. The refreshing sounds that it produces. is something that is going to live with us in this bigger altar of the church for a long time. It's going to impart our lives. I want you to look. I want you to, you know, have a, a, a vision, a picture of it. And begin to release a prayer. Make a prophetic statement. Lift up your voices and begin to pray. In the name of Jesus. Church, I want I need you to pray. Pray for our brother. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we give all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, we give all the glory. In the name of Jesus. Let the dew of heaven bring us a refreshing. Show us thy glory, O oh Lord. Let the dew of heaven play the organ for me.
dedicates this instrument of music in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Put your hands, two of them. And as you pray, you play this instrument. May the sound that come out of it bring healing Amen. and restoration. Jesus. You will play this piano and the sound. Mm. People cannot stand on their feet. Yes. They will be slayed yes. by the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Destiny shall be restored. Amen. This tool will be a voice of God's goodness and his providential love. It will bring assurance and it will bring breakthroughs. This is an altar of the Lord. God will raise this altar to your glory and your honor. Amen. And for this family, Lord, the God that keeps covenant, the God that visited Florence, Visit them this year. Amen. Visit them. Amen. Visit them. Amen. Let them have a divine supernatural visitation Amen. this year. Amen. We are your servants. God, do not put us into shame. You have never done that before. And we ask this one. We ask for this one. God, do this. I know you will. But for the faith of others that are hearing and watching, may this be a testimony Amen. that indeed our Lord lives. Our Redeemer is alive and is active in the lives of those that seek Him. For this is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. God, thank you and bless you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. Let's put our hands together for Pastor Patrick and Pastor Joe. Shall we call on Deacon and Florence to do the vote of thanks? There we are out of here. Let's welcome her. We, oh, you can do better. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. There is anointing in the house. And our God has a track record of answering prayers made on this altar. We have evidence. Cecilia and Ketia, Mama Sylvia, Jane Chenaboa, we have track record of answered prayers Hallelujah. that are made on this altar. And we stand on that today. Whatever is your need that you can't even voice out, go home in peace. Let the peace of God that passes all understanding garrison your thought as you trust the Lord that he will come out strong on your behalf. For he that watcheth you, he neither sleeps or slumber. Our God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are clapping, clap it for God. On behalf of Abundance Life Baptist Church that meets at this particular place, this is a local expression of God where everybody is somebody and Jesus is Lord. That is who we are. We want to thank you all, our visiting pastors, we want to thank all the ministers, visiting ministers in the house. We want to thank our friends. We want to thank our family members in and out of state that paid the tithe of time to come and be with us. Especially our pastor, Pastor Patrick. We want to thank you for leaving your church, your family, your commitments and everything to be with us the whole of this week. He paid the tithe of time. Our God will reward you in his own way, by his own time, in Jesus' name. Father, we also thank you for our 
ordained deaconesses. These women are Hallelujah. powerful. Amen. And we thank God for their life. And we pray that in this estate, you will conquer, you will flourish, Hallelujah. and you will increase in the name of Jesus. You will flood the nations in and out. And the glory of the Lord will overpower you. We thank you, our family members, our church family. We thank you for the committee that put up this program together. Amen. Mariah and Renita and her Amen. group, Pastor, uh, Brother Sam, we want to thank you all. Minister Eric, thank you all for everything we did as a family to bring this program to, to a success. As we depart today, may the glory of God continue to make a way for us. Thank you for this year's anniversary celebration slash ordination. We want to thank God for 19 years of his faithfulness. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you for your time, your patience. Let's celebrate the birthday, people, before we go. It's Gracie here last week because of the memorial service. We couldn't do birthday. Gracie, if you please bring her here. The young people would like to be celebrated. Webster, are you here? Uh, my own deaconess, Bridget, come here. Uh, Sister Brube is not. Uh, Sister Bridget Brube is not here. Maybe the husband can stand in. Hallelujah! Is, and anyone who is celebrating, uh, Mr. Andrew Opon or Kweku, come here. Let's celebrate you. Hallelujah! Come on, come on, put your hands together. And anyone who is celebrating, Hallelujah! Gracie, how old are you? Five. They didn't hear you. Five. Last one. Five. Somebody shout hallelujah. Five years is in the house. Hallelujah. Wow. All of you are celebrating. And I am so grateful. Wow, wow, wow. More coming. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Praise God. Church, whilst you are sitting, strip off your hands and speak a blessing unto them. Jesus said, do unto others as you wish to be done unto you. Press down, shaking together, longevity, long life, goodness. Your life will be a reflection of the love of God. Father, we want to thank you for every family that is standing here. All of them, from the young to the older, we pray for longevity. Dickness Bridget, thank God for your life. Sister Bridget, Bridget, probably thank God for your life of pioneering. In between, thank God, every one of you, whether it's a milestone, anniversary, or birthday. Father, I use grace as a point of contact to bless all the birthday celebrants. May your life be profitable. I take away pain and shame from you. You fulfill destiny. You bring smile to your family. You be a hope to your generation. Go and shine and manifest the love of God. You were born for a reason. Don't you know you are like an Esther? You have come into the kingdom of God for such a time as this. We receive you as a gift and we enjoy all of you in Jesus' name. And somebody said, Shall we stand up and sing a birthday quickly for them? Ready, go. Happy birthday to you. All of you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you now. 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 Let's put our hands together for them as you sit down. God bless you. Gracie, God bless you, okay? Bye-bye. I go to a prayer request. Hallelujah. Beloved, we are bringing the service to an end again. Apologize for your time, but your time spent here is much appreciated. Uh, if there's somebody who came late, please, we don't want to take you for granted for spending your sat. Sunday with us. You have so many choices, but you choose to be here. I don't want to embarrass you, put you on the spot, but want to recognize you. Just wave at me wherever you are. Let's, uh, let's appreciate everyone. Is there anybody? Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Wave at them. Ah, there's a man right back there. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Ah, we thank you. 
Your coming will not be in vain. And may the Lord visit all of you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. Quick announcement. Guys, do you have the clip ready? If it's not ready, we can do it next week. Is it ready? Uh, there are two clips, but because the anointing is so powerful, we'll reserve the David dance for next week. Hallelujah. Because if I release the David dance this morning, some people will backslide. Hallelujah. The, the dance was between Cameroon, Ghanaian, Liberia, and Nigeria. Uh, they, they were the fourth contenders. But, you know, at times, take time to enjoy. Yesterday, dinner was powerful. Those who miss it, you miss it. And, and we just want to have a few pictures to show you before we go quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray. Thirty years of his goodness. I see someone at you. 